As I've said earlier, that we'll begin by a guest from the Action Collision, where we're going to look or highlight on what uh, access to information is. That before we uh, with, uh, we go uh, ahead with our questions, uh, so, uh, welcome to the program. In case you are... Yeah, great. Great to be with you. And, uh, without wasting any time, uh, with due time, uh, I just need to find out, since uh, we also remember that we are marking the first uh, International Day for Universal Access to Information, uh, that will be on the 28th of September. Now, my first question for today is, uh, what is access to information? If we can just start with that. Um, it's often said these days that information is power. So if you have access to accurate information, then you're in some way empowered and able to make better choices about your life or about your community. So the, there are lots of examples where we need more information. So, for example, say in the town of Apua, if you want to know um, if a new road that's being built is going to go through your property or your land, you should be able to access that information from the relevant authority, maybe the Kuneni Regional Council or the Apoa Town Council, and you should be able to check easily, is this going to affect me? Should I uh, uh, protest about it? Should I complain or should I accept it? What's the information that I need? Um, so there are lots of basic examples where in order to make the choices about our lives and our, 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 what our communities are doing, mm -hmm. we need to get access to information. And that's become recognized globally as a, as a human right, really, in the last sort of 10 to 15 years, um, because I think people have realized we're now in an information age. And um, it means that citizens who aren't part of that, who don't have access to information, can be cut out, they can be ignored, they can be bypassed. So that's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. And the second question also that I have, uh, uh, is the access to information, is it guaranteed in the Nigerian constitution? Not, not uh, um, directly in the sense that the phrase access to information isn't used. And um, that's probably because our constitution was written in 1989, 1990, and the issue of access to information wasn't perhaps so relevant at that point. But um, it does, uh, we do have our Bill of Rights, which guarantees freedom of speech and expression, including freedom of the media. Um, so that relates to um, the uh, issue of uh, distributing and disseminating information freely and openly. Um, and we also, um, Namibia supports a number of international uh, um, declarations, including the UN's uh, Declaration of Human Rights, um, which also talks about the right to uh, expression and hold different opinions and to receive uh, and to distribute information. Um, so we are um, bound by the spirit of the Constitution, if not exactly by the letter of the Constitution, to make uh, access to information a, a very clear human right. Uh, Mr. Obud, uh, if we remember quite well, we remember that the, the bill or the AT bill was tabled in the National Assembly earlier at the beginning of this year. What is the status of this bill uh, in the current or as in now? Yes, I mean, first of all, you know, the Action Coalition has been ca campaigning for probably about seven years now to get the access to information law in place. And it's been a long, drawn-out process, and we've been trying to assist the Ministry of Information uh, and Communication Technology where we can to draft the bill, while also being a bit concerned, you know, that we do get a really good law and not something that uh, doesn't do the job. So. Uh, we were pleased that when the um, bill came into the National Assembly, tabled by the Minister of Information, Dr. Peya Mushalenga, earlier in the year, um, around the time that the lockdown happened. And, um, you know, it's actually a reasonable bill. We think it could be improved in one or two places, but uh, on the whole, it's a, it's a good bill. So at the moment, what happened in the National Assembly is that the Minister and others accepted the points of civil society is a, is a good bill, but it could maybe still be improved. And uh, they've now referred it to what's called the Standing Committee on Information and Communication Technology in the National Assembly. So that's a smaller group of MPs uh -huh. who will look at the bill and hopefully they will invite public comments and have public hearings so that members, ordinary citizens can actually give their input on the bill and how it should work. And then at the end of the day, um, probably now, early next year, we'll get a, a better bill which can be passed by Parliament and we hope implemented during 2021. So a lot is happening at the moment and we hope maybe we're in about six months we'll have a, 
a good workable access to information law in Namibia. And we also, if we have to track back, we remember that uh, uh, the Action Coalition, uh, including the uh, all those uh, organizations that falls under it, including the APPR and the Namibia uh, Media Trust and so forth, there were a lot of discussion uh, that uh, on the on the ATI bill. A lot of discussion has been held, including presentation and stuff. Uh, the question that I have is, uh, why is the access to information so important to the citizens of Namibia or the citizens of this country? Well, I mean, access to information is, is always important in a democracy, as I say, because um, we need to have information that's reliable and accurate in order to make decisions. And uh, that applies to individuals, but to communities, to traditional authorities, you know, to um, towns, villages or whatever. So um, that's why it, it sounds kind of like, like an obvious thing. You need information, but it's amazing sometimes how hard it is to get the right information whether you want, as I say, to uh, look at what government is planning for your region or your town, and if you've been consulted and if you approve of what they're doing, um, or whether you just need basic information like on, uh, for example, how, how to prevent the spread of COVID-19 or any other health information, um, whether you, might, you know, for a journalist or researchers like us, often it's information that's held by central government that uh, could be controversial. So you want to know, for example, who, which companies or which individuals benefited from our fishing industry or which companies were successful in the recent fisheries auction, which is an, a piece of information we're still waiting for. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of information that just make our lives function in a better way and also help us to make the best choices. Um, so that's where the bill comes in because if um, first of all, the bill is saying that the law, the draft law is saying the government must be proactive on, inform on releasing information. So they must actually make as much information available as possible, even before we ask for it. So um, they must put it on their websites, on the on the on the government Facebook pages. They must make information available so that if you need a form to apply for something, if you need to know how a certain system works, for example, applying for a birth certificate, uh, applying for a death certificate, you can find out really easily in, in a very straightforward way. Uh -huh. um, and because we now, uh, you know, have more access through the internet and because our phones increasingly are able, enabling us to access in information as well, this is all quite possible, where it wasn't maybe a few years ago, you would have had to go and queue at an office to get a form. Now you should be able to download download a key form off the uh, off the internet. So this is why it's important. And, but what the bill does is it says if government or any other body that might be supposed to release information is giving you a problem, is saying you, they can't give you that information, but it should be out there in the public domain, then you can complain to an um, or lodge a request through an information commissioner who will act on your behalf to make sure make sure the information is released. So uh, it's twofold. A lot of information should be available already. But if you have a problem accessing into information, then the law will make it easier for you by enabling you to lodge a complaint or a request uh, and to get the officials to make sure the information you want is released. Uh -huh. So that, that's basically, in a nutshell, how the law will make lives of ordinary citizens better. Uh -huh. Now, should this bill be implemented or the ATI bill be implemented? Uh, how can the public in general benefit from the ATI in terms of uh, knowing their rights and exercising them as, as citizens? Yeah, well, one of the problems is uh, I think we don't, a lot of us don't realize we have an access, a right to access to information. And so um, one of the things that will have to happen is when the bill is passed is that we, government, but also civil society, will have to do a lot of um, like this kind of awareness raising, campaigning, to make sure that um, the general public know that this bill exists and also know that they have a right to information. And therefore, they don't need to sit at home and think, well, I, well, I don't know about this, I can't find out, uh, I can't uh, access the information I need to maybe get a basic service or, or, or to sorry, contact my council or MP and tell them I have an issue or uh, I can't get the, the latest uh, version of a law because it's not available. They don't need to sit with those problems anymore. They can actually 
uh, check that the information is available. And if it's not available and it should be available, there's a process to follow, um, which they can then use to make it available. So this thing is, some people think it's just for journalists, but it's not just for journalists who might be investigating sensitive, controversial issues like corruption. Mm -hmm. It's for ordinary people to get basically ordinary type information, all of which should be available, and often we find that it's not. This case here, 94.3, we are still on the ATA access to information with our guest from the Action Coalition, Graham uh, Obut. Uh, Mr. Obut, apart from the, the, the normal citizen, including just us, the normal ones, now how can the government, uh, including the leaders of this country, benefit from the uh, from this uh, access to information? Well, it increases the level of accountability. So uh, we all know that politicians and elected officials need to be held to account. You know, if they don't, if they're not held to account, and it's, people are not watching what they're doing, and demanding uh, explanations, then you end up with situations like fish rot, where you have a lot of corruption taking place, or you just have waste of resources or you have non-implementation of a lot of issues, uh, a lot of uh, programs, for example, the government should be doing. So it, it's a means of the public holding the government to account and officials to account. And uh, I think it will actually lead to a more efficient government. Uh, government is more likely to deliver what it's supposed to do for ordinary people if they know that they are being monitored very carefully, that citizens are engaged, the citizens are asking for information. What happened to this money? Why the, the, was it not spent on our community? Why did we not get the clinic or the hospital that we saw was in the budget? Uh, or, or, you know, positive things. Um, if, if, the, if the school was built, if the clinic was built, you know, then uh, we need to check that it's uh, uh, been done properly and that uh, the, the services that are supposed to be delivered from that uh, building are actually being delivered. So um, all kinds of things will help um, the government to deliver its services to ordinary people in a, in a more efficient and improved way. And there are also some tendencies where you will, uh, encounter office bearers uh, who are refusing to, to, to give information out. Let's say a piece of land was purchased, but then as citizens or as uh, residents or inhabitants of that uh, certain uh, village or, or town want to find out how much uh, the, the, the price of the land uh, went for and for what purpose was it. Uh, and then they, there, there are instances where the office bearers will refuse, automatically refuse to give out this information. What does one do in these instances? So that, that definitely happens a lot. I mean, even ourselves as researchers, we approach and the government official says we're not allowed to release that information or sometimes uh, that information is there, but I don't know who has permission or you must write to the uh, formal letter to the executive director and they will consider your request. So there's a lot of information that's held back or it's there's delays in releasing it. So what the bill should do um, is change the culture in government. So at the, those officials who are currently blocking you or delaying you should be told through uh, the um, um, structures in government, there is now an access to information bill. You have a responsibility in law to release information, all except maybe some areas that might be closed off, and that's usually security related. Mm -hmm. But m almost all, you know, information in government is relatively non non controversial and should be released. And so, for example, the one the one that you gave. You know, you need to know what kind of uh, price property was sold for, for all kinds of reasons. If you've got a business, you might want to know what's happening with the land in your area and whether it's being developed and what services are being provided. So all those kind of things should become a lot easier because there'll be a change in the mentality and approach of the government officials because they should be instructed. It's your responsibility ethically as a civil servant, but also under the law to make information available to the public and to respond to requests. Mm -hmm. So the bill will actually designate people in each ministry or each agency to ensure that the, the, the information requests are met and, and, and ordinary people get the, the facts and the figures and the data that they need. Uh, Mr. Hobart, I believe that we have exhausted our time. If you have anything to add on the access to information, you can go ahead. Well, I think, um, you know, there's always an opportunity in Namibia, it's a democracy, to engage with the politics at national and local level. So I think 
It's important for citizens to keep watching what's happening with the Access to Information Bill. If they want to, they can contribute to trying to make it a better bill. You can get the actual draft bill from Ministry of Information or from Action Coalition. Uh, but more importantly, when the bill is passed, let's utilize it because we don't want the government saying to us, yeah, but you pressured us for years, we passed this bill, and now there's nobody making requests or there's nobody uh, really utilizing the change uh, in government in terms of being more proactive and positive about releasing information. So uh, it's really important that we utilize the rights that we have, because if you don't use the rights, you, have, you stand the chance there's a danger in the future that somebody will come along and take away those rights. So it's like a muscle, you know, if you don't use the muscles in your arms, they'll waste away. But if you use those rights, if you use um, the chance to get that information uh, that you need, then that, that right will be protected in the future. Thank you very much once again, Mr. Hopwood, for this uh, insightful information on access to information from Action Coalition. Thanks very much. Hopefully you got everything you need, eh? Uh, hopefully I got everything that I need. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, that was Graham Opwood from the Action Coalition. Actually, he represents APPR. APPR is an affiliate of the Action Coalition, including the Namibia Media Trust, uh, including a lot of other groups uh, that fight for Namibian citizen rights, as we speak. Our program was access to information uh, with our guests from the Action Coalition. We will also have more, including uh, for the month of October and November, we we'll talk about the access to information. Uh, in due time, we're also going to change uh, this program to also include uh, the local uh, vernaculars. So stay tuned as we also have more, or as we're going to bring more for you on access to information.